Lecture 8-3, Types of Volcanoes. Now, there are different parts of a volcano that you'll see almost in every single volcano. You have the magma chamber, which we've talked about before. Just uh, below the volcano, the magma collects, and this is deep below. And this, if it's full, you have a greater chance of an eruption. If it's empty, the volcano may be extinct. The pipe is a long tube that connects the magma chamber to the surface. So it connects the magma chamber to the surface. The vent is the main opening where molten rock and gas leave the volcano. And then the crater is that bowl-shaped area that may form at the top around the central vent. So this kind of bowl-shaped area that forms at the top of many volcanoes. So you see that the standard volcano, again, magma chamber down here where the magma collects. It will travel upwards through the main vent. It can come out the crater. It can come out side vents. And move down. Now, of course, it erupts, and you can produce ash, you can produce lava, you can also produce some other materials. Those other materials are the pyroclastics. In pyro, you can think about fire and then the solid pieces. Um, ash, which is going to be the smallest of the pieces it produces, very fine rock particles. If you breathe in some of this ash, it's going to feel like breathing in razor blades. Uh, this is the reason why when volcanoes erupt and kick a lot of ash into the air, we divert air traffic away from the ash because those the ash could go into the jet engines and actually could cause a tremendous amount of damage, and so it could bring a plane down. We move planes away from that. Cinders are about pebble size. They're ejected out. Um, ash, if you think about our old volcano here, ash can travel the farthest because it's the lightest. Uh, if during Yellowstone... If Yeltsin were to erupt, the ash would travel all the way to Iowa. Cinders are pebble-sized. They're going to be, won't travel as far, but they can still travel a good distance. And then bombs are the largest pieces. Uh, baseball are car size, and those will not go very far at all. And that's because they're the heaviest. And so ash will travel the farthest, cinders not as far, bombs the least. Uh, but they all can do damage. Ash, of course, can do damage over a larger area, and during very, very big eruptions, the ash can get up to the atmosphere and actually cause global cooling, where the ash would reflect sunlight back into space instead of allowing it to come and heat up the surface, and that can actually cool down the Earth. And it has happened in previous major eruptions. We failed to measure the drop in average temperature after these eruptions. Now, there are three main types of volcanoes. The first type is called a shield volcano, and it's called this because it can be looked like a shield laid on its side. These tend to be the widest volcanoes just because they have a very gentle slope. Uh, they get very, they get kind of slow lava flows, but there's pretty much no large pressure buildup. The lava just comes out and then moves, and it moves away. And as it moves away, it'll harden forming the nice little volcanic island here. The Hawaiian volcanoes uh, are pretty much shield volcanoes for the most part. And this allows the islands to be constantly growing because the lava is coming out and cooling and making that bigger and bigger and bigger. The shield volcanoes do not have explosive eruptions. These are the big characteristic of non-explosive eruptions. These are the main ones to have that. A cinder cone will have a slightly explosive eruption. Um, they're steep, but they're not necessarily huge. Uh, so whereas the shield volcano is gentle slope and going wide, a cinder cone could be much taller, but definitely not as wide. Uh, it has very fast lava flows. It may have ash, cinders, and bombs. And this is, if you look at it, you can even see a layering of that that helps form that, so different layers of material that forms that. This, again, lower pressure buildup, so this will not travel as far, and typically cinder cones have a smaller magma chamber, so the material is going to be forming in one small area. Uh, these volcanoes can form quickly uh, and then die out just as quickly. The characteristic explosive volcano, the one that can cause the major eruptions, are called composite or stratovolcano. It goes by both names. And the reason why it's a composition of different layers or strata, and so it's made of pyroclastic materials. It's explosive, fast lava flows, large pyroclastic materials. It's tall and cone shaped. So whereas you know again, here's our shield volcano. 
Here's our cinder cone, which is much steeper. This is going to be the bigger volcano than those. Not as wide as the shield because it gets very tall. When we think of Mount St. Helens, uh, Pompeii, Vesuvius, you hear any of the major volcanic names, you're going to be thinking about a composite volcano. Uh, we're going to have very large pressure build up. You're going to have large explosions. You're going to have material sent for miles, large ash clouds. So these are the explosive volcanoes. These are the ones that can do the most damage of the main three. Now, there is a fourth category. These are not as common, and we have not witnessed an eruption of these, but they're called super volcanoes. They're pretty much a massive volcanic eruption. It's rare but incredibly powerful. Thousands of cubic kilometers of matter can be ejected, and the dust from and ash from the eruption can cool the world's climate for years. And the main one that we tend to talk about is Yellowstone National Park. Pretty much is one large supervolcano. Now, the main feature you're going to see with the supervolcano is called a caldera. It's a circular-shaped geographic feature formed from the mass eruption of an ancient volcano, subsequent collapse of the volcano back into the ground. Pretty much, supervolcanoes have the largest magma chambers of all. And as these erupt, they can actually cause the ground above it to collapse backward into it. But these magma chambers are constantly getting refilled and erupting every so often. So the caldera formation, you may have a typical volcanic landform. You can see that our magma chambers down here. And we, of course, have lots of these little side vents. As the pressure starts to build, the volcano starts erupting. Eventually, though, it, the ground weakens, you get more of these cracks, and then it collapses inward. And then we can see our nice little caldera here, but because of low depression. This is Crater Lake, which is in the United States, and this is pretty much one large caldera. Now, this is pretty much to an extinct volcano, not one we're typically worried about, but it is the same thing that formed Yellowstone. It's just a much smaller scale. Think about why we worry about Yellowstone. Uh, when Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, its ash covered a large region here. It was carried out by the wind. Um, these dark areas here are from pretty much past supervolcanic eruptions. Now, Yellowstone right now is right here. It erupted 2 million years ago and 630,000 years ago, and we've collected the ash uh, in large parts in Nebraska. We can actually found it caused some extinctions, uh, caused some massive deaths of animals, and you can see that both of those reached into Iowa. We could actually probably find some of these in the bottom layers of rock, but of course it's going to be small amounts. But a current volcanic eruption in Yellowstone, and again, when these erupted, Yellowstone, the caldera, has been moving. Uh, it used to be over here, and then it erupted, and it moved, and moved, and moved. And it's constantly in motion. That's because, remember, the whole North American plate is moving this way, and so this is a hot spot that's forming it. So the plate moves over the hot spot, and you can see the supervolcanic eruptions moving, in a sense. Now, Yellowstone has caused a lot of news in the last uh, five, ten years, because the amount of earthquakes happening in Yellowstone have greatly increased, which could mean that the magma chamber is refilling and getting ready for another eruption. If this did happen, you can see pretty much areas immediately around Yellowstone would be just total destruction. And then maybe even a larger circle around Yellowstone, you would have a lot of destruction caused by this ash. And then depending on the wind direction and the wind strength, it would determine how far the ash goes. But ash would definitely fall. This, you know, think about how many farms are in this region. All of a sudden we have ash covering the ground. That would greatly inhibit our ability to grow crops. Now, there are also different stages of development for a volcano. We can talk about how it forms, how it erupts and that. But we can say an active volcano is one that's just had at least one major eruption 10,000 years. Um, and it has a, it has the ability to erupt again. It still has a full magma chamber. A dormant volcano is one that is not erupting, but can erupt again. So an active has erupted in the last 1,000 years. Dormant just means it's, hasn't, it's not erupting right now. An extinct volcano is pretty much one that has not had eruption in at least 1,000 years. It's not expected to erupt again. Pretty much an empty magma chamber. And we can study this. We, of course, have seismographs located all around 
volcanoes, trying to understand how, where the magma chamber is, how full is it, is there a possibility of eruption. And there are some volcanoes that have caused major eruptions in the past, but they no longer have an active magma.